All right. What's on the menu for today? <laughs> what do you want me to talk about? Yeah. Um, and and it, make sure it, you know instead of just blurting out words um, like fire hydrant. Um, <laughs> What's really important to you? Like, what, what is weighing on you? What's really, always do it this way. What's really important for you to hear or resolve? Growth. What? Growth. Purpose. Destiny. Pain. What is it? Pain. Resistance. What? Resistance. Emotional alchemy. Okay, that's good. Hold it. Wait. <laughs> I thought I said that's enough, but go ahead. <laughs> Polarity. Polarity. Um, Pain. Pain. Intuition. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Healing unhealthy family relationships. <laughs> she said hopelessness. <laughs> 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 Healing unhealthy family, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? There's only like, that's only like 30. What? <laughs> yeah, that we've covered that already. <laughs> what? <laughs> what you, you guys have nothing else to go on, to do? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, I got that one in here somewhere. Um, yeah, it's in here somewhere. I can't really read what I, you know, I, I just I just kind of, um, it comes to me and I'm, I scribble what the, my mind will be triggered by it, but I can't linearly see it. It's more like spiritual shorthand in a way. Okay. So the folks online, um, yeah, I can't read them all um, or repeat them all, but um, there's a lot of a lot of things. Hmm. You know, it's very important that um, no matter. Um, I'm sorry, one sec. Jeff, you had your hand up. What was yours? No, mine was broke. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, with all the spirituality and all that we do, we, we have to remember depth, not just heights. Not just stimulation of heights and growth and expansion of consciousness and all this, you know, really cool stuff. But uh, tenderness, you know, grace, feeling, compassion, you know, that, that has to always be there. The concept of spiritual evolution um, is often depicted, um, and in holistic health, the, the caduceus, you know, the, you have this symbol. And in that symbol, you have the right and left path, okay, the right side, the left side. In a sense, that symbolizes the spiritual path and the healing path working harmoniously, so people that try to only do the spiritual path are trying to bypass the human self, the hurts, the stuff. You know, the, just the human stuff, the feeling and, you know, so on. But then there's people that are all holistic -y and spiritual that don't really do anything spiritual. They're, they're, they're into holistic healing, but they're not 
believing in something sublime and spiritual to go to. They're just like, oh, no, no, it's all about just, you know, doing my exercise and Pilates and whatever, not having a spiritual, true spiritual path. It's really about the harmony between these two. And it's not like you do one and then the other. Really, they're a blend. It's just this movement. And there are days where one will need to be emphasized and days where the other will need to be emphasized. Hence, you know, like look at the diversity of topics that people brought up. And so, and even one of them being polarity. This is an example of polarity, but yet is it polarized or is it harmonized? You know, if we just get back to clarity and guidance, we would be guided to know today I'm doing this and that, but I'm staying in this harmony. I don't get out of control over here and then have to be swung over here. Why do I go through this stuff, the, the, the things like fear and major challenges that we go through sometimes? It would never get as extreme if I lived more like here. It's when I neglect spirituality that the lessons will come to wake me up along those lines. When I neglect my health, things wake me up. They bring me back to this. So, you know, just enjoying this I say enjoying, you know, it sounds challenging for some people, but enjoying this beautiful walk between the two. This is not a, just like a spiritual center, although it is, it's also a healing center. Because we don't ignore things like people's pain. That doesn't mean I'm saying we should enable it, but at least allow people to speak it, to feel it, right? Not in a hurtful way. A couple of you brought up, what about family and other kinds of relations, challenged relations? It's a, the bottom line is this. <laughs> this is going to sound like a strange metaphor, but family, you need family whisperers. So when the family's out of line, you need to put them on a treadmill and make them walk off their anxieties and not take them out on you. That's what you do to a dog that's out of control and shreds all your pillows you know, you see the dog whisper. Well, you have to do this with your family members. Of course, they're not going to go, oh, okay, and just go along with your program. I'm saying you have to figure out how to create boundaries in your life. Here's what is okay, and here's what's not okay. Family members, dogs, anything in your employees, partners, here's what works for me, here's what doesn't work for me. Now, some of us will say, oh, I could never because they would leave me. That's codependence. You need help. You need some therapy, you know, because if you can't set a healthy boundary, there are some bigger issues. And you're basically signing up the universe to abuse you. Okay? Because you're saying, I don't know. So the universe will go, well, we'll test you to help you find out. Whether you know, and it'll just give all these fringy tests because you're not living here. You're saying, I don't know, I'm way out here. So the universe says, and so it is. People will treat you way like this. Things will happen way like that. Will extreme. Doesn't need to be. You reel it in. When you're able to say, okay, universe, I, I got it. You know, I wasn't being responsible. I wasn't being healthy. I wasn't being communicative. I get the joke. And therefore, you brought all kinds of lunatics into my life <laughs> everywhere. You know, I go to the grocery store and I just have to have somebody that's going to be all weird and push my buttons, you know. And, and that's, that's, in a way, it's, it isn't God. It's, we say, the universe. It, I just mean it is a, the reflection of the world or the universe back to you, your statements. Who are you? I don't know. Oh, oh, well then, by all means. Let's test you and find out. Test, 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 way out here. And then you go, oh my God, I don't like that. Oh, thank you. So you learned something. Yes, I don't like that. Well, then you don't like it because you're reacting to it or because it isn't you. It's not me. How do you know? Because I know. Then the universe can say, and so it is. When you can say, I know. But you have to show up to say, I know. See, I'm not fighting from an addiction it's not me. There's a difference. I'm not fighting off family members that are pu constantly pushing buttons, partners that are pushing buttons. You're the one who hasn't told them. Here's what I'm about. 
It's hard to come into this world and be five and say, just family, I just wanted to say, um, here's what I'm about. I know. But that's because we don't believe that that's possible yet. So what age is okay? You know, does it have to be 85 before we start to say, no, I don't think that'll work for me, honey. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, like really, does it have to be? What about 60, 50, 40? It will happen one day where you'll be five and you'll know who you are and the universe will comply to your knowingness. Universe being all beings. Because people are intuitive, one of your words, intuitive, and they try to pretend they're not. Even when we put it on our business cards, intuitive. Humans love to act like they're just nimrods, like just dense nimrod. Like they'll say, oh, I'm an intuitive um, counselor, and I've had 10 failed marriages. <laughs> not as intuitive as you think, are you? You are. You just don't want to own it. Why? Because it's scary. It's scary if, if I really own it and say, okay, I know, I do know who I am, and I do know what doesn't work for me. You know what's going to happen next? That means I'm ruling out a lot of dates. <laughs> and I'm ruling out a lot of partners. Now I'm alone. And I'd rather be with someone, despite my intuition knowing this isn't the right person, I'd rather be with someone than to be alone. And again, that's my weakness speaking on my behalf to the universe. It's like, you know, order up every morning, universe. Order up, and we wake up going, I'll take it to anybody, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. What's the special of the day? Garbage? Okay. <laughs> Can I have that with some crackers, please? It doesn't make sense. But if you own that, you're going to feel worse. So you have to act like it's a surprise. <laughs> Once again, a man has deceived me. Where's your business card? Intuitive. You knew this was coming. And, and, and the day is going to come when we don't play that game anymore. You can't not play the game if you still feel desperate. I need someone in my life. See, that desperation means I have to block out my knowingness. When Jesus was crucified, there's this point where the Bible is trying to describe and, uh, something happening, that this cruelty, this level of cruelty that people dished out on him. And the way they describe it is, and God blinded everyone from seeing what they were doing. Yeah, because that sounds like God. I don't want anybody to have a conscience. And I want him to then, I know what I'll do, because I'm God. I'll block it out, let Jesus suffer, and then all at once, I'll lift the blinders and make them all feel terrible about themselves. It's, it's just the Bible's way of saying we blind ourselves. We like to pretend we don't know what we're doing. We like to pretend, oh, how did I get here? Time is an illusion, and it's one we make up, but it's very convenient. Because if you're 20, and you sit, you know, 16, 18, whatever age, you sit, you remember sitting back going, you know what I want to do with my, I would love to do this, and I'd love to have, I want to fall in love, and this one and only, you know, all these ideals that we have in our mind about life, and then look at what we've done to our lives, there are so many things that have happened you would have never agreed to if you would have owned your intuition. Instead, we get, it's just like it wears us down. We get into one, and now there are people that have said to me, Michael, I have not had great relations because after my first one or two, I was damaged goods. Like, what a horrible way to think of yourself. But it's kind of true. I remember being a kid and, and, and having a, a messed up enough family to where when I saw somebody I was attracted to, it was like really magical energy. But I could see this person really had a beautiful, clean energy. There was a part of me that went undeserving. I, I can't be with somebody that together. Because I, I knew, I knew really clearly 
This is the kind of person that would want you to bring him home and meet your parents. I can't do that. Like, that doesn't go well. This household of mine, you know. So, so I, I couldn't enjoy the greatest things that I would have liked to have enjoyed. And then you get worn down. That becomes now your standard. And then something else happens, and you lower it and lower it and lower it. Pretty soon, we feel like we, we just don't deserve much at all. That is not the life I believe I, I agreed to back then. We didn't say, I can't wait. By the time I'm a certain age, I want to be used this much, abused this much. I want to make sure I've had enough addictions and so on and so on. That's not what we would have hoped for ourselves. And some people will justify it. Oh, but I guess I needed to go through. You. No, no, you did not. Don't give me that garbage. When someone tries to say, oh, well, I, I needed to go through terrible things in my life or I wouldn't have learned uh, better things of life. No, you can actually learn good things without going through bad things. That's a bogus affirmation. It's not healthy. But I can prove to you that you know you're wrong trying to pull that off and say, well, I needed to go through. Okay, so if you have a 10-year-old, would you like to affirm for that 10-year-old, you need to go through hell to get to heaven? You would not. You would not. If you're any amount of sane, you would not do that to a child. You wouldn't say to a 16-year-old daughter, she's starting to date, honey, this is going to be amazing. You're going to go through the worst imaginable partnerships, and they're all going to lie, and they're all going to abuse you. You would not wish upon someone you love, which means what? We didn't love ourselves enough to say no to those events. That's what it means. Now, today, whatever that day is for you, today, literally, yesterday, tomorrow, enough is enough. That's what it comes down to. So what do I do? I'm going to fix myself. There must be a program that's totally, well, there might be several you might get involved with. But the one I would most recommend with is a walk with God. Let God become your co-pilot, your guide. You know, don't just try to figure it out yourself. Okay, I, I'm going to now um, use muscle testing to be my determiner. What, do you, what muscle? You know, my body muscles. What body? You don't have a body. So you're, you're, you're in Safeway. Somebody wants to take you on a date, and you're like, hold on, by the Wheaties, you know. <laughs> okay, I guess that's a yes. But you don't realize your mind is telling your body how to test. Anytime that you ever did water dousing. The water dousing isn't actually the, the stick you're using or the metal rods. It's not like the rods are laying on your shelf going, please take us out for some water witching. That's not what's happening. You're the one who senses the water. The, the dousing rods are actually responding to your mind. I swear to God. A pendulum, all it is is an externalized thing. If I take a, a, a board, a stick, uh, you know, two by two board, and hold it out, the farther that it goes away from me, the more it's wobbling. I can look perfectly still, it's wobbling. Not just the weight of it, not just the gravity of it. Things that are outside, listen, are always exaggerations of inside. So your most screwed up relationships are not to say that you're that messed up. They are exaggerations of even your slightest self-worth lessons. Did that make sense? They're magnifications. So, so the universe doesn't just mirror lessons. They magnify them. But the ego doesn't want you to know that. It wants you to think you're as messed up as your lessons. And you are, in a way. But they're magnified. Why would the universe, why would we have created a universe that magnifies our lessons? That sounds horrible. No. So you don't miss them. And I wouldn't need them to be so exaggerated if I knew how to get them when they were here. I could walk by a well, potential well, and just know 
But sometime, in some way, I've forgotten how to do that. So I take the rods, why? To show me when I'm sensing the water. It's not like, oh my God, the rods found the water. Let's lay them down and bow to the, oh, <laughs> water dousing rods of great intelligence. It's here. So whether you're dousing for water or muscle testing on whether you should date a person or not, you have to pray first that your ego be set aside. Because otherwise, you're actually seeing evidence of all parts of yourself, potentially including ego. So it's like, I'm leaving this to God. I'm going to muscle test to see if I should go out with you. You've asked, so let me muscle test. But inside, you're like, please be yes, please be yes. I need a date. So you're going to sabotage the test. Then it's going to be like, God, what happened? You, you said yes. I remember. I mean, I can look at it on the, the security cameras on, at Safeway that I tested and it was clear that I should date them. What happened, God? God's like, no habla inglés. No. <laughs> I have nothing to do with your weird decision making. You know, like, didn't you hear when you were in front of the Wheaties doing your muscle? Didn't you hear the Pop-Tarts fall off the shelf behind you? <laughs> that was me saying, don't do it. You know. Um... Call me silly, <laughs> call me for breakfast, but um, those cereal stories, you know? It's um, cereal, fella, cereal killer, don't date him, you know? <laughs> but we don't want to hear it. Why, guys? Why? Because we're, we're hijacked. Our mind and our soul has been hijacked by the ego that has no intention of us living a beautiful life. And some people will say, well, what if we tame our ego? <sighs> no, it doesn't work that way. The ego is the part of us that it's the embodiment of our fear. Fear of what? Our divinity. So it has no intention of showing us our divinity when in fact it is the embodiment of fear of our divinity. So you can't go, well, what if I pet it? It doesn't <laughs> want you to know your divinity. Well, can, can we make it less aggressive? No. You, you, it's it's going to do whatever it needs to do in the moment to mess with you. And sometimes it plays the good cop, sometimes the bad cop. So sometimes it's, it's trying to be seductive and other times aggressive, but either of those is not real. It's not authentic. It's not for your greater good. Just because it acts seductive at times, look at Buddha under the Bodhi tree, meditating. He's getting closer and closer to, oh my God, I get it. And, and many of the things I'm saying that you're laughing at is actually you're reaching enlightenment to a degree on each topic. You're like, oh yeah, of course. But you can't just laugh at it like it's a separate thing. We laugh at it, then we own it and we change it. That's when it's real. When we can laugh at it, not just as an external thing we laugh, it's more like I laugh at it, then I go, oh man, and how do, how do I do that? How do I relate to that? Where's that gone on in my life? See? And then alteration, that's enough. See? Then some simple, humorous little anecdote becomes a major an antidote to my sickness, my mental sickness. So we can change things. We, we shake them off because we see through them. And it's okay to laugh. I mean, of course, in Miracles tells you that the, the, the end of time, when the finale of the world is over, the, the, there's one thing that happens. There's the grand aha, and one second later, you will hear great laughter. What a strange thing to say. You know, is that what you hear at the, at the, from the televangelists? Oh, the day is coming. <laughs> All of you are going to be in hell, but not me. And you have only one chance. Give me money. <laughs> and you might not go to hell. You know, it's kind of weird. How do we not see through that? You know, it's a little convenient. So... What do we do? The, the, the ahas, to be able to laugh. Why does it say great laughter? Because 
We had deluded ourselves for so long. You're going to at first be tempted to judge yourself when you start owning and realizing what you've done to your life, what you've done to yourself. I dated people that, that weren't me, but I didn't know me, so it, it worked. I need someone to make me feel something. Well, look at me. I guess I'm functional because I have a date. Before, I wasn't dating, and my mother was saying, why don't you ever date? And it was like, well, I guess there's something wrong with me. But if somebody asked me out, now I'm fixed. No, you're not. You're the one that was flawed not dating, in your mind, because that's the program you took on. So then you made up some solution that's not real. You don't fix a headache when you take an aspirin. The headache's not gone. You just don't feel it. And you're not fixed with your prosperity issues just because you robbed a bank. <laughs> no, look, I proved Michael wrong. I am prosperous. You're actually not. It's a lie. And the headache's not gone. You just killed the nerve in the moment, for that moment. You numbed the nerve. It has to be real. So we'll go through a moment of feeling terrible about our lives or what we've done with our lives. That's that's an important part of the healing path, but not because you're supposed to end up feeling bad. It's just, it's a natural thing. The Novocaine starts to wear off after the surgery, dental or whatever it is. So the Novocaine wears, that doesn't mean, oh my God, I better rush back to the dent. No, he said in the paperwork, uh, in about an hour or two, this will start to wear off. This will start to, you know, it's normal. It's normal for you and I to feel some pain about the life that we've led. But that's not our goal or our destiny. As we heal and forgive ourselves, the pain starts to subside because we're starting to find the healing that's on the other side of that surgery, soul surgery. We're starting to realize, you know, in the surgery I had, what, cancer removed, a cavity cleared out or whatever. And the metaphor in my life is thought belief systems removed. Self-deceptions removed. Now, what do you do after you remove it? You have to replace it. If you don't, you're in trouble again. Because the ego doesn't go, oh, dang, somebody that started meditating, I guess I'm out of a job. <laughs> no, it just goes, okay, I know exactly what to do with meditators. <laughs> Annoy them. Make distractions. Oh, they're trying to meditate. Somebody has to mow their lawn right then. <laughs> Just right, why then? Why now? And now you're like, God, that neighbor, I think they know that I'm meditating. And they're doing this on purpose. And you start making up stories. And the ego's like, this is so cool. This is so cool. I love messing with meditators. It's just extra humorous to me, the ego saying. But we realize, you know what? The ego's there all along. You're, you're in a body, you're probably going to have an ego messing with you. That doesn't mean when you die, you don't have an ego. You have a ghost ego. It still rides along with you. My job in the old days was to become so perfected that I have no ego. And it worked in, in the last million years. It worked like twice. <laughs> Those are bad odds. Now, Buddha comes along and says, you have to start seeing this bogus. I'm paraphrasing. You have to see this. You have to see through this. Hold your center and see through this garbage that the ego hits you with. Then, 500 years later, Jesus comes forward and says, not only that, see it, but I want you to practice something. Forgive yourself for it. Don't just see it. Forgive yourself for it. When you've done that, you've allowed grace to replace karma. Which Buddha was saying, this karma thing. No, we can neutralize it. Stop reacting as though your ego is your master. Jesus just adds, and forgive yourself when you slip. You see the difference, the, the addition to that? So we get to that place. This isn't like enlightenment as much as it is in lighten up. <laughs> I've told this story before, but when, when they're looking for a, a, a replacement for Siddhartha, when they're looking for a replacement for Buddha, he's going to pass away. 
And long story short, you know, day after day, there's people gathered, all the monks, hundreds of monks gathering. Who's going to be the one? And Buddha would sit with them, eventually get up and leave, and they're like, it's not picked. Not knowing who's that one, who's it going to be? And as the story or legend goes, one day after several days of this, one monk broke out laughing, and he said, that's the one. Lighten up. If you still are going, I'm going to get this right, you're, you're still thinking there's an it to fix. Therefore, you don't know your divinity. When you can laugh at, look at the things I do to try to fix myself, which implies that I'm already broken, which means that's the, the, the idol I worship, my brokenness. I, do I think I'm doing that? Do I know I'm doing that? No, but that's what you're doing. If every day you are listening to the voice of brokenness, technically you could say you're feeding it. And in the world of statuary, idols, and sanctuaries, it's, you could use the metaphor to say that you're worshiping it. You're worshiping your false self because you keep feeding it, and you only want to feed things that you think are of value. And the things you think are of value are technically false idols. Break free. Laugh at it. And forgive when you slip. See? That, that's how beautiful this is. Now, some people are like, no, no, man. This guy's full of it. It's got to be more complicated. <laughs> it can't just be about forgiving ourselves. No. You know, and that's, I'm sorry for you. That's a person who's destined to come back another hundred times because <laughs> they've taken it too seriously. Now, I started off when I started about sensitivity, how important it is, the healing, the feeling. The father aspect is the one that says, let's go. The mother aspect is to, you know, the one that says, wait, we're hurting right now. See, that's the father and mother aspect within us. Father and mother God, father and mother nurturer and leader, you know, as, as it were, whatever it is in your mind. But the father aspect is a little more direct, the mother aspect embracing and holding. We need to be both of those to ourselves and others. There's a time where, you know, it's like, I'm not feeling right today. I need to just be quiet and nurture. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build a couch fort and watch Looney Tunes. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to do that. God, if my children show up, I'm 80. If my children show up and see me in a tent fort, they're going to go, it's time for a home. <laughs> you know, a tent fort, Looney Tunes, they're going to go, oh, you know, and then they're going to call a doctor and they're going to go, that's normal. They're regressing to childhood. And instead of actually, they found their youth. They're having fun, right? The world doesn't support these, the concepts of God and love and reality. It really doesn't. If it doesn't, are you waiting for it to do it? That's called codependence. Someone's got to bring it. You can say, I'm too wounded to bring it. And we say, we get it. Let us hold you verbally, prayerfully. Let us hold you, and so on. How long would you like to be nurtured and held for your healing process? Because you're, you're too broken and hurt to be a bringer of light. Okay, fine. How can we help? But after one day, two days, three years, 18, at some point, the father aspect is going to say, get up. See, Jesus sat, and he brought these children to him. And he started telling stories. That's the mother. And then there's points where he went, Lazarus, get up. That's the father. Not Lazarus, honey. <laughs> if it would be okay, if it feels right within your, you know, muscle test yourself and <laughs> see if it's okay. And you know, that's the mother aspect. Guys, there's time for the mother, time for the father. There's times for you to say to yourself, I'm just going to sit in a hot tub today. There's another time where you have the father aspect say, that's the, fa that's the neighbor's hot tub. Get out. <laughs> you know, the father aspect just has cuts to the chase sometimes. We need both. We need to allow both. We need to be both. The question is, at what time? At what time? When? Call on the intuition that we don't own enough. Intuition is synonymous with creativity. They're synonymous with your heart chakra. See? Sensitivity, love. Wow. You know, uh, one of the words you guys brought up was alchemy. This is all about alchemy. 
This is all about fusing the, and, and the, the processing of the masculine and feminine, the right and left path, the spiritual and the healing path, becoming the embodiment of this wholeness. Not calling one side whole and the other side whole. It's, it's becoming that. When you see me, you see the Father is partly what, you know, one of the points Jesus was making. He was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm a embodiment of. So on that note, there are people that talk about ascension. They talk about, you know, oh, sorry, I'm late for work again, but I'm just so fifth dimensional. You know, you're fired. <laughs> see if that'll help you become three dimensional. Because you're in a body. No, no, you're denying me my fifth dimensionality. You know what? You're right. From now on, you come to work anytime you want because we're going to honor and support your fifth dimensionality. But of course, you won't need a check because you're fifth dimensional. <laughs> and then you're going to then you're going to suddenly get in your body, you jerk. You know, and you're going to be over at Whole Foods gossiping. You know, oh, don't work for that company, man. They're just so cruel and. You're the one who's messed up. You're the one who's trying to play out the fifth dimension when you're still in a body. You've got to be responsible. I know, I know we would love to just be out of here. But if you're not, there's something for you to still learn or do. <sighs> what a drag. I know. Thanks for sharing. Now what? And we've got to deal with it. Some of us would love to have been out of here at one. We're like, you know, you know, on our crib, you know, the little crib cage, you know, we're on the side of the crib, just like, can I leave soon? You know, um, you know, and other times we're a hundred and we're like, I, I want to go. If you're here, there's something for you or else you wouldn't be here. You don't understand, Michael. I'm so evolved. I really shouldn't be here. <laughs> if you're that evolved, you, you wouldn't be blaming, first of all. Second of all, if you're that evolved, you would know exactly why you're here and finish that off. So, and I'm, I'm not putting down our desire to leave. I'm saying I feel for you. That's what you should be doing for people that wish they were gone. I feel for you. Because this place sucks. It's harsh. It's hurtful. It's selfish. It's aggressive. Now, some of you are like, oh, God, I, I, this is too much for my chakras, man. I just can't even hear this kind of talk. Um, you know what? Tr try and listen anyway. Move through your resentment of me and what I'm saying and listen. This is a harsh place. It's like Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, I'm paraphrasing just slightly, it's where the hungry and thirsty come to die. Oh, that's so like unicorns, isn't it? <laughs> what does he mean? He's saying, the, you, the, the earth is the cosmic New York. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> so you come to earth because it's the densest of all lessons. It's hard stuff. And if you're that cosmic, you could have got it when you were on Jupiter. You came to Earth. Even if you get it on the other side, you're like, oh my God, Epiphanies. They're still going to say, look, everybody, they got it. Now we're going to send you to Earth to make sure you can prove that you got it. You still have to come here as your testing ground. Even if you woke up, you still have to come here to be it to embody what you claim to have gotten in consciousness. So it's not a bad thing to be here, but don't pretend this is your home. As Yogananda says, this is not our home. It isn't. This is a place where we mostly experience and see the effects of not being home. And once in a while, getting glimpses, glimpses only of what home would be like. One of those are the bad days and one of those is the good days. You can figure that out, I think. You know, but 
you're being told by the greatest, don't get attached to either of those two days because they're still not home. They're still not the, this is a place that is a mirror. It's all it is. It's mirroring whether I'm plugged in or not plugged in. And it doesn't mean in this moment I'm plugged in. I could have something go really bizarre in my life because of a day 5,000 years ago when I wasn't plugged in. And Buddha's telling you, don't react to it. Don't re see through it. See through it. It's a game. He called it the wheel of life. It's just a game. Something that was done is coming back to test you. React to it. You've affirmed that it is, and now it's your reality, and now you have stuff to pay. See through it, don't react to it, and you've proven it isn't real. And it disperses. Does that mean one time hearing this, you go, it all just happened? No, because... The more we get this, the more intense the lessons get. Why? Be because you don't test college people with five-year-old school tests. The more we graduate in consciousness, the more the tests match that consciousness. Now you can say, well, but I don't like that. I really want the lightest of tests. Then you have to lower your consciousness, have very little conscientiousness, just, you know, like I've said, you know, be a brick, come back as a brick, and just stand on a building, you know, and have no thought, no nothing, and you, you probably won't have a lot of tests. You just be sitting there. You know, you could still find something to be miserable. It's so cold. You know, you could still be miserable, but it's not like the universe has to test you a lot. You don't claim to be much, so you don't get tested much. Because we know from scriptures and other holy masters throughout history, you're tested based on your consciousness. You can wish for less. I've done that, I'm sure, sometime in my life. Oh my God, this is, you know, can we just back it off a notch today? But if you really ask yourself, is that really what you want? If you're really kind of evolved a bit, you're usually not going to say yes. Usually you'll go, no, fine, you know, and you can kind of, you know, and then make, make a joke out of that too. Fine. You know, I guess, no, I don't want to go back three notches. I don't want to go back to being a 3.1 program of consciousness. I'm, I was a 3.7. You know, I'm almost ready to ascend to another level of dimensionality. Yeah, I'm going to go back to a 3.1. No, you know, you just know you can't do it. Laugh at yourself for thinking it. Have a mood. Scream into a pillow. All kinds of things you want to scream. Every vulgarity if you need to. You know, just scream. And then, oh, this is not very fifth dimensional. I mean, <laughs> shut up. Just <laughs> scream into the pillow. And then just scream, 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 and go, sorry, I'm being a 3.1 right now. <laughs> Get it out, because when you get it out, you're being honest about how you're feeling, and then you can return to, but what am I really? I'm ready. And you get up, and you deal with that thing that made you want to scream. And you walk through it. You've gone through the fire under you. That's the alchemy, where base metals are turned to gold. Can't find that gold without testing, you know, in fire. Fire is a strange element because it can warm us or burn us. If you have karma, it tends to burn away the karma. But as, after we've burned away the karma, we find the beauty of warmth from fire. We realize it can be used to warm my, my heart and soul, but also other people's lives, you know. I get what you mean. I see what you're going through. Um, and you take their hand. Warmth. That's the mother. See, the mother aspect. So something that's really important to remember now, so using this context, and then we'll start wrapping up now. When I'm doing a talk, and I, and I hope this is true for all of you, but when I'm doing a talk, people will say, well, how do you, you know, know what you're going to talk about? And, oh, he must be so experienced that he can just riff off of anything. Then how did I do this the first time I started talking? There's, you can't, you know, don't, don't try to 
figure it out in your head how or why. Here's what happens. And my first talk or two I did actually think that you're supposed to have notes. So I, I got notes and wrote them like teachers tell you you're supposed to. And then I was like, well, you know, then what am I going to read a script like a politician? I really do care about the American people. You know, it doesn't, that doesn't seem very authentic. <laughs> Um, St. Martin, Buddha, Jesus, they claimed, they said very clearly, what I'm speaking is not from books. It's not memorized material. That's what they're saying. These great beings, they're like, it, it's, it's the book of life. You can see it, feel it. So what I'm saying is, when I'm teaching, what is happening? Oh, he really knows. Don't, don't even go there. People say different things about me teaching. They'll say, wow, you're charismatic. I, I, oh, that's just such disgusting. Come on. You know, don't, don't put that kind of humanistic terminology. Oh, you know what you know. And the reason I'm saying it's disgusting is because you're not listening. You're not getting what's really happening. And you're trying to not get it. Because if you get it, you're going to have to own some very beautiful things. There is a God. You're capable of plugging into God. And you're capable of bringing that to other people. That's what happens. Three relationships, God, self, and others. That's the only three there are. Well, what about my dog? That's an other. <laughs> God, self, and others. God, self, and everything and anything that is outer, outside of you, is an other. Your car is an other. God, self, and others. So what happens when we get our relationships right, you know, I wrote a book, Creating Fulfilling Relationships. And people immediately go, oh, great. You know, how do I find my soulmate? And they're looking. And they see chapters on getting yourself right with God and self. And they're like, I don't like this. How do I get my one and only again? One and only again. Right? How can it be a one and only if it's for the eighth time? So all that garbage it's just like so shallow god self and other if god and i are really right on it's going to be easier to create healthier relationships or holy relationships with others why because they mirror how i'm doing inside which also means every weirdness out there is, is mirroring my desperations does that make me bad no it makes me human and i'm becoming divine so stay true to yourself to thine own spiritual self be true. If you are willing to bargain your integrity, your ideals, then you are worshiping idols instead of ideals, your ultimate principles. So when I'm talking, the intention I set is, I think I'm going to just talk about something of interest to me, and I hope to impress an audience. No, no. It's got to be God, self, and others in that order. So I have to set an intention to say, God, what would you have me do? That's my attitude in the mornings every day. And, you know, I do my best to stick to that and then forgive myself when I don't. But here I am, God first. Now, picture it like a, a funnel. This broad openness to God then goes halfway down the funnel. It narrows into me. I'm a channel. By the time it reaches the funnel and accesses this moment, it also has to take into consideration you. So saying, what would you guys like me to talk about? Even if you were all really shy and you didn't give me 50 topics to cover, <laughs> it wouldn't matter because you're still here and I'm still saying God, self, others. Some musicians and speakers speak or play, perform for themselves. That's egocentric. I don't really care about you people. I'm so amazing on guitar, I'm just going to do my thing. And if you don't get it, it's because you're just so beneath me. That's how many artists do things. Many artists don't even think they have to tap into God. I'm, I'm an amazing artist. I get paid so much for each of my paintings, I clearly don't need to tap into God. Bring God into any scenario and it can only make you better. Bring God into your partnerships, into your meditation time, into your gardening, cooking, anything, and it will improve it. God, what would you have me do? Let me feel your presence. Live that, think that, mantra that, affirm that. God first. 
Then it comes into me. And now God's going, Michael, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a talk today. And it's not like I'm gone and God speaks as God and I'm just gone. I'm supposed to be integrating what's coming. And if I'm not, I'm actually a disconnected channel who just tells you how to live but doesn't do it. That, 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 those days are over. People are, are, I'm telling you, people are done. It's just like the, the tail still wiggling on that lizard after it fell off. It looks like it still has life, but no. Politicians, we're, we're not interested in lies. And spiritual teachers and what, anything that's just not authentic, people are now sobering up from. And, and that's part of why it looks like the world is going through this strange, almost apathy, and it, which is happening. And it's sad. And yet, I can understand it. Why is there apathy? Because people are tired. So if you're going to be a spiritual person in your family or in front of an audience, either one, you're better off if you embody it rather than talk it. Hey, this book, man, this book said this. And, you know, and I, wow, you know. The more you talk something, the more you, uh, if I have something, then I don't have to talk about it. The more I just, like a kid on Christmas, Look what I got, even if it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. They just got it. They're excited. They're going to tell everybody. When a person thinks they know something spiritually, oh man, I'm just so fifth dimensional. They don't really have it, remember, have. Or they wouldn't have to talk about it so much and tell you. They wouldn't have to tell you how spiritual they are. You know, I don't, when I, if I even go out, I don't go places and tell people what I do. I do not. I don't. I don't, oh, you know, hi, Mike Murdoch here, I'm a spiritual leader, and come and see us. Like I'm, you know, kissing babies and, yep, I'm running for mayor. Nice to meet you. Um, yep, support us. Um, I, hi, I try to avoid name. If they say, what's your name? Michael. And I can tell, I can tell that little silence is waiting. Last name? I try to just, oh, look. I do. If you, I swear to God, that's how I do this. No name. Then if I give a name, it's Michael. I don't go to last name. If I give me, <clears throat> because I don't want people to, I'm out there proselytizing or out there, you know, selling my, no. If people feel called, they'll show up. You see, I don't feel, that's not me. And I'm not saying it's wrong for you to give out business cards for your massage work and whatever you do. I think it's great. For me, the best thing is not to do that. It's just, for various reasons, it's the best thing. So I say, God, what would you have me do? And God says, okay, we are dealing with Michael, as it does for everybody. If you say, here I am, it comes through you. If you're into Shakespeare, you might notice that when you tell somebody about a great book, I foundeth the most loveliest <laughs> book in all thine history. And you'll be all, you know, when you're doing it. If you're a painter, it'll come through. If single mom, it'll come through. Understand, it'll alter based on you because God honors you, not is repelled by you as a filter, honors your filters and says, I need exactly you. I need exactly that skin color, that haircut, that height. I swear. When we say, here I am, God wants to work with you. Okay? We're not pathetic here. We're holy children of God. Now, so God's going to come through your limited self. No. As it comes through, you're gaining and growing as a self. You see, my skills, abilities, a healer and all that I do, counselor, is partly because of doing this, living this and integrating it. If I only talked about it, I could not live with myself. That's not, my brain can't do that. See, I, I really can't. It doesn't compute. 
I have to feel it. I have to live this. I'm talking about this. I'm, I go home and it's going to show up in 50 sessions. And then it, it'll show up before I even, you know, say this. There's signs and synchronicities that we're walking and living and swimming and thriving and experiencing. And when we learn to see, we can see. When we want to block off our intuition, we shut it off and we act like everything's just random. God, and it comes through me, and as it comes through me, I become more of it. That's an authentic, that's the best level of channeling. I become what I'm telling you. See? It would make no sense for Jesus, Buddha, or anybody else to say, I don't know a damn thing, but I'm going to tell you what I heard in a book, read in a book or what. Integrated, you could just tell. The Pharisees looked at Jesus, hating him, but they still said, dang it, there's something about this guy. Some of them are saying, he's just reading scripture. We've had those scriptures for hundreds of years. Who cares? No, no, no. Some of them said, Listen, he actually embodies it. The difference between a preacher and a person who becomes that embodiment. And what am I embodying? Well, I'm not going to go, oh, I wonder if I could just embody uh, some discarnate entity. That would be f great. Anybody have a dead relative you want me to? Okay, well, now there's a value for that for some people at some time. Get it. That's fine. I'm teaching people, so here's what has to happen. God, I'm open. All right, Michael, we're going to use your oddness, eccentricity, humor, anything, everything, whatever, you know, your wardrobe is going to be necessary, your particular hair, your, your be we need that today. Here I am. So it goes from God through this thing, my knowledge or lack of knowledge, it's all used. Your, your academic background, your lack of it, it's all used so perfectly, none of it matters. The details don't matter. It's something great's happening because you have plugged into God and God's coming through you. One more step, others. So when we're really living a great life, we're going God, self, others. And that means what would you have me do today or what would you have me teach today? And it isn't God and I have decided that you people oh, need to hear a lesson or two because you just don't get it. Instead, you have to be, in a sense, equally important. Even though the priority is God, self, then others, they're all equally important, which sounds like a paradox, but it is what it is. You're equally important, which means God's going to say, thank you for calling upon me, Michael. Let's, let's play. Here, here comes information. It's going to filter through your style. And there are all these people all coming from a different place, but they're going to feel like you're talking to them. Each of them could feel like you're talking to them. Some are just going to listen broadly, but it happens quite often that people say, no, seriously, you used an example today, you know, that has to have been meant for me. You see? And I can say, oh, no, no, that's just a coincidence. I don't believe that. I know that God is beyond multidimensional, but we'll use that for now. God is multidimensional, which means wherever you're watching from on this planet, you could watch this program 10 years from now, and whoever you are, race, color, gender, etc., somehow God is able to go, you asked last week for this, you needed last year from that, you have a lifetime that's hung up here, and it's going to come through this conversation. Now, is that because I'm just so brilliant? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. <laughs> you just channeled God. I just want to say Amen. She said, absolutely, for the people online. It, is it, and what if it is, like, I do feel very intuitive and brilliant, and yet block God out? I'm telling you, this is going to run dry. You'll be one of those channels, and they, they're plentiful, that goes on a stage and realizes it's not coming through. And now they have to contrive a channeling for the audience that's paid to see them. They have to fake it. And they've confessed this to me, many of them. I didn't shame them. I just say, I, I get it. But I have to tell you, you can become that thing. 
you can. Instead of the magician with your magic, you're channeling the real thing, the real thing from God. So in closing, God, self, others. And therefore, God is brought into this. I'm a channel, but my being a channel is my willingness to do whatever is necessary. That's part of my criteria. Here, I'm, I'm ready. So God says, thank you, Michael, because I really need to work multidimensionally today. There's somebody over here with this, somebody over here. You see, there's no way you can have a linear conversation and reach the souls, minds, hearts of so many people. It's impossible in a matter of minutes. How does that happen? It has to be a multidimensional experience. So God has to therefore be multidimensional. It is. The channel has to step into or become being multidimensional. And then the many dimensions of belief systems in the audience are then brought in and addressed. If you're an artist, if you're, even if you're just opening a business, stop thinking just from your head. Remember, be creative, which is intuitive, which is loving. They're all part of the same chakra. So when you design your business card, don't just go, I want this. Also ask yourself, what would people want to see? What wording? You see? Well, my eyes are kind of weird, and I can only read fonts that are four point, you know, four, size four font. Nobody else can, but that's their problem. Well, now, why don't you have any business? Well, people are just so messed up. <laughs> or you forgot to include that they need 10, 12, or whatever size font. Something as simple as that. What you put on your business cards needs to be God, self, and others for you to be successful. Channel the intuition, the insights about what you're going to advertise, and it has to represent who you are. If you don't know who you are, how can it work? And then who do you want to reach? You see, I want to sell a book to children. I want to write a children's book. And my guides are telling me it's going to be 1,500 pages. <clears throat> Your guides need therapy. Your guides are off. Oh, how dare you? My guides are really, really advanced. They can't be that advanced if they don't know how to sense the mind of a child. So interestingly enough, you are the greatest when you're willing, able to step into the lives of the people you want to talk to. You see, you've got to be able to adapt. What am I needing to do today, God? Instead of, I can only talk to 30-year-olds or 80-year-olds. or If whatever it's going to be, step into it fully. And that still involves that I'm becoming what I'm channeling. I don't just talk it. When I write a book, I don't write at people. I write the book, but I also, when I'm proofreading, I also imagine, will they want more in that paragraph? Would they want less? See, I have to become you to be able to work with you. I have to become God to have a relationship with God. I have to become me to have a healthy relationship with me. I have to become you to know how to have a relationship with you. I've never believed in this garbage about, oh my God, you know, the, the, the generation gaps and men are men, you know, from this planet, women are from that. That's just people that don't know anything making up stories to justify separation. A man can know a woman by being in touch with his own femininity, or vice versa, you know, a female, the same. You don't have to have a generation gap, just tune into that age, and then you'll be able to channel or address or connect with that age. You can write a book as an 80-year-old on what it's like to be an adolescent by just channeling your memories, your feelings, but also your imagination. What is it like to be five? And you write a children's book, you see? What is it like to be whatever it happens to be? What does the audience need me to play today? Not, they don't get it. What do they need? And if you're intuitive enough, which means creative enough, which means loving enough, it'll come to you. If you're shut off to those things, it's not going to happen. There won't be any magic with the audience, and you'll blame them for it. But what I just said is also true for your partners. What do they want? 
conversationally, sexually, personally, whatever it is. What do they want? What are they needing right now? And just every so often, just try to be quiet and listen. Because you can be in the middle of a whatever, you know, what are they wanting right now? Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. You do? You know, this is the big one, Elizabeth. You know, you give them one of those moments of like, oh my God, that you've never said. We've been married 60 years and not once have you ever said, I get it. It's always opposition. You heard me. Oh my God. See, and that's beautiful. So even the stuff you're asking about, family relations, partnerships, it's still tied into what we're talking about today. Don't just try to change things from outside methods. Practice changing the inside. Be part of God, be part of your real self, and be part of others, and you'll know what people want and need at any given moment. Please take a moment, centering breath. Breathe in and own anything you heard that made sense to you. And then it's yours. It's not something you were told. I get it. You could write it, recite it, or share it with someone else straight from your own mouth that it's yours. This is what you know to be true. If you think about any word you brought up for me to cover or can think of anything you personally are going through or wanting information on. Destiny, synchronicity, and so on. Just bring it into your mind now. God already knows the answer to your question. And we think there's an outer problem. But in between, God and the outer is myself. So what have I not been willing to see? What have I not been in the mood for, ready for? What is it that I'm doing that blocks this knowingness from coming down the funnel into my life? Use your imagination. That way you can override your head and assumptions and patterns. Imagination. God, what if I am plugged into you and all that you know, I know, in a humble way? And this channels down into my being. Let me just imagine, what have I been missing? What have I not, and don't look for intellectual downloads. Maybe there's going to be a few words, but also hopefully a feeling. What if my question was, how do we come from love? Imagine it. And immediately, how do I come from love? And then the words for me would be, don't come from defense. And then it would continue from there. Keep coming to me. For you, what is your question? Let it download. And if 
you shift at all, let's pretend you only shift 10%, if not 100. This download comes and gives you greater insight and beingness about some challenge or question you have. Now imagine, how does that change you in your relation to others or outers? Even if you only change 10%, how does that change your interaction with your life environment world, relations? Becoming the embodiment Become the change you want to see in the world. And I do slip, but now I understand. In God, I'm already okay. And I need to open up to that. Let that catch up to me. Heavenly Father, Mother God, I celebrate today's quantity of awakening, whatever that quantity might be. I get how this will affect my recovery program. I get how this affects my partnering, parenting, personal value. I get this. I get it now to a whole new level. Guide me further and further on how to become this presence. I walked in the light of God and now I'm becoming the light of God. That's what God created me to be and it became so distant that I thought eventually one day I stopped but I found the spiritual path, got on it and started walking it towards light. I forgot. At the beginning, God said, let there be light. That light was me. And when I forgot that, I started looking for a path. When I found one, some were lighter than others and there were variables. Now I'm getting, I am the light I was seeking. But I do have to start Thinking like it, feeling like it, living like it, speaking like it, being like it. I have to step into it and become a ch an embodied channel of this light. And this is made all the easier when I allow you, Divine Mother, Holy Spirit of God, to help birth me into this consciousness every day. My real self my Christ self. And I give thanks that this begins now. And so it is. So we're um, just to stretch for a moment, kind of center. We're going to just do our closing prayer in a moment. Um, oh. How do you feel? Good, good. I hope I addressed <laughs> all of these or most or whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. We've never had such a grocery list here. We're going to take up our collection and do our closing song. Please, please be as generous as you can be. I have a couple of things I'm going to share with you very quickly. Um, next month, I'll be doing my, uh, month, my annual mastery class. For the first time ever in 30 years or however many years I've been doing that one every year, instead of a five-day intensive, 
Um, I'm trying to simplify some things and make them more easily accessible to people. You can't cover as much, but it's now a two-day workshop. You can do it online, and you can watch it at any time that's convenient. It'll be a kind of a weekend workshop. However, um, I will also do it in person here live, but only if a cer you know, certain number of people sign up to be here live, okay? So um, if it's a workshop you want to sign up for, you need to contact the office this week and say, I'm in and for um, in person. If they don't have a certain number, it'll just be online, okay? All right, there's that. Um, today we have an afternoon workshop on hands-on healing. So I'll be presenting that, whether you're a chaplain doing training on the topic or just anyone else online or in person that you want to study, you know, uh, learn the essentials of hands-on healing, you're welcome to join us. Um, we appreciate that folks are getting used to arriving a few minutes before service because we do a, sometimes a song or sometimes the announcements. So try to show up, you know, if you can, 10 minutes before the hour. Um, the people online can just wait till the hour, but thereabouts, all right? Um, if you're interested in private sessions, contact the office if you want them with me. Our chaplains, however, are available and uh, all through the week, you know, 24 7, 2 a.m., 4 a.m. <laughs> all right. Within reason, um, <laughs> Jeff's number is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So our chaplains are available. Guys, healing, counseling, hands on healing, you know, counseling relationships work, all kinds of things they do. Prayer, and it's free. You can have this available to you. And because it's free doesn't mean it isn't miraculous. The comments and feedback we get from people are astounding. So it's available to you. We try to do as much as we can here for free. We do things on a donation basis, like Sunday services, and so on, and some workshops we charge for. But as much as we can do, we do for free. Um, if you're interested, we have our healing room, which is a crystal bed sessions. If you're interested, you can go out, you, you sign up in the office or the bookstore today or this week and have one of those at any time. And they are quite out there, man, very powerful. Um, and I think that's it. Remember that uh, in the bookstore, we do have DVD sets of, of uh, the DVD sets of mine are ones where they've, we've taken four topics that are sort of in the ballpark, like healing, um, emotional healing. So then it would be every like different topic of emotional healing, anxiety, depression, different things like that, all in one DVD. But you have basically four topics in each DVD, whether it's on Christ consciousness or on healing, whatever, that's what the DVD sets are, just so you know. Um, I've got my books there and all that too, but uh, Karen's uh, working the bookstore today, wonderful person, wonderful you know, helper there, and she'll help you find the kinds of things you're looking for in there, all right? So let's please do our prosperity prayer. Together, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have all that I give and all that I receive, and so it is. Thank you. So it'll only take them a minute or two to pass the baskets out. The um, blue baskets are for your love offering. The wicker baskets are for any extra donations you might be able to share, which we use usually the bit white wicker basket, people of lesser means or sometimes special projects. So while they're passing those for the next minute or two, what did you learn or hear today in the service, the talk, or the meditation that really spoke to you or that might help your life or life of people around you? Yes. I, I Right. Yeah, because it would seem like there is. The, the key word, you don't have to go through hell to get to heaven. But because we believe we do, we have karma. We have lessons. We have, the, like, for example, um, if you asked God of gods, do I have to go through alchemical fire to find my inner gold? God would say no. And then God would say, 
but since you think you're dense lead, yes. So it's a contradiction? No, it's a paradox. It's that in one reality, we're fine. We're, we're God's holy, perfect light children. In another, we believe in dot, 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 fill in the blank, and then we live accordingly. So the lessons are with people that still believe in lessons. That doesn't mean you can be like some sociopath and go, I don't, I don't have any karma, I don't have any lessons to learn, and just keep harming people and not have, it doesn't work that way. Your soul knows when you have lessons. The soul knows far more than the head knows. But, um, yeah, so the lessons are just for now what we seem to go through. Till the day we live in grace and it's gone. Yes. Everything was powerful. Good. Thank you. And I brought up the word intuition. And I realized how important it is to trust your intuition. Because I'm a builder and I've built beautiful houses all my life. And I've, I've had a lot of success. Nice. But 10 years ago, I decided I was going to write a book. Mm. So if you're, he's talking about being a builder and feeling called to write a book about his trade and things and such. Um, you have to remember, you're, you're, there's the guidance and you have to bring it all the way down to this. So who am I writing for? You know, who am I? Like, so there's God giving me, let's say, an inspiration. Then what is my experience? Because I'm part of the, I'm the channel, right? It's coming through me. And then there's to who am I writing? So are you, are you writing to people that are first-time buyers and wanting to flip a house? Or are you writing to high-end trade people that are like experts? All of those things are going to determine how many you sell. To young people. To young people. That, that and there are plenty of them. That don't have an education. Right. That, need, that want to succeed and you know, become successful. Right. So speaking to them in a language that says, here's how you can either beautify a house uh, economically for yourselves or how to make money flipping a house, for example. Just remember, you need a chapter on how to get contractors to show up. Okay? Don't forget that chapter. It'll sell a lot if you have that a answer to that. We know why the painters don't show up. They're like, you know, <laughs> you know, just... The ambiance of the paint cans opened, you know. But the contractors, you know. All right. A couple more, yes. I, I love, because it was about family relationships, just stop, start with God. Yeah. And it will be fine. Right. <laughs> Even in your relationship with family, you have your priority, God. What is God to me? Give me a word for God. Love, okay. That means, that means if God is love to me and I allow relation conversations that are not loving, I'm actually not following God's guidance. Because if God to me is love, I need to insist on love. I'm not talking about, I need to insist on romance and intimacy. I'm talking about love. If love's not here, my answer is no. Hey, honey, how about some makeup sex? No. <laughs> Let's find the love first. See? And that might be inconvenient to some people, but it's the higher way to live. Someone else had their hand up. There you were. Hi. Um, I, I realize as you were speaking, I'm trained to be a human being. Right on. But sometimes I think I am kind of selfish. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's really giving me Thank you. You can be trained, whether it's Unity, Baptists, Religious Science. And just like I said, my first talk or two, I was told this is how you do it. You, you make notes, and, and you're told to follow a certain something, which is fine. But the new age is not about 
reciting a memorized speech nor one with notes. It's to become what you're talking about. Become it. Now, they used to say some of the a few great ones in the past, they would just say, just know your material, like memorize, know your material. I'm saying you become it, and then you'll know it. So the, the old school teacher you are, the minister and such, versus today's, if, if right now you just heard what I just said and you suddenly became it, there would be something magical that your audience would see and feel with you. They could go, well, she still did a talk about a certain topic, but there was something different. You see? It's because there, it was fluid, so e like it just poured out because she became it. There wasn't a thinking, thinking, you know, it wasn't contrived or anything like that. Yes? I noticed the Phoenix accent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Thank you, dear. Yeah. It means a lot to us that you or anyone, anyone can watch online or attend and feel mm -hmm. there's something magical, which is mostly me. But, <laughs> um, the truth is, if I didn't know what I'm doing and set this intention and say, God, this would run dry. Yeah. Yeah. The me, would, it, would get all, it would run dry. I've, I've never done a Sunday talk and go, I just, oh, I wasn't on my game. It, how can you not be on your game? God. Yeah. You know? What, one sec. Wow. Right. Right. And that's the point I was making, uh, going to make, which is th this person, it's my responsibility to, to, to do this, to go, here we are. Then these people online as well contribute to an energy to this place. Because I could just, okay, here I am, this is amazing, but if I didn't do the third step, which is us, then there would be a disconnect. So there's an us, and everybody's like, we're digging this. So we're now we're co-creating something, you see. And you're one of those us down here. So you also have to have been ready to see this in us. You see what I mean by that? Which is partly what you just said. She has to have been in a way already, her mind already going there to have seen us play it out for her. Aren't we amazing becomes, oh my God. They're mirroring that I am ready, which is kind of what your prayer was. You see what I'm saying with that? I mean, we are mirroring. And, and if I like my audience, they're mirroring my goodness. If they like what I'm doing, I'm mirroring their goodness. I mean, we're in this together. But I know this isn't just a, a cool, charismatic kind of an energy between a teacher and student. That's so old age BS. This is so much more profound. I mean, this is what happens when you plug into God and you let that come through you and you care about people enough to bring it through to them. And we're all in this dance now that's profound. But it's a decision we have to make. And we are making. And pretty soon, there won't be any option but this decision. 
Of just a couple more people, sorry. Yes. Multi-dimensionality. You're welcome. Thank you. That multi-dimensionality thing that's happening, um, and I'm and I'm sorry we've gone over it, but, but I love hearing your feedback, um, and and that multi-dimensionality and what really is happening. And there were times when people would say, "Michael, you were speaking directly to me." You know, I'd go, "Okay," but I I was like, "There's no way I can go." and take time to explain this every person every week, you know. So I'm glad that I took a moment to say that a little bit more here um, because it's true. It's true. Any one of you a week ago might have said, God, please help me. And then you just kind of put it out of your mind and you go about your business. And a week later, you ended up in here receiving not just maybe direct answers like and information verbal, but maybe a frequency, mm -hmm. maybe a shift, maybe, and it was an answer. And if I don't believe that, we would be back to chopped up linear conversation. I, this is a multi-dimensional experience because it's a multi-dimensional intention. And that's the real magic to that. Just a last person or two, please. Yes. Right on. Now, repeat that again and say, um, Michael taught us. <laughs> Go ahead. Michael taught us <laughs> that, that there are three relationships. <laughs> there are only three relationships, God, self, and others. Which one feels more right? God. Which one of those options, the way you said it? When you just said it or you repeated Michael said? Isn't it kind of cool when you just say it? It's, yeah, the first one. You, because you know that. Now, if I'm sitting with you and you go, well, this guy Michael said, I immediately have to run it through my filter. Do I want to listen to what some guy said that you're telling me about? It's like second hand, third hand. When you say there are, I'm right here with you and I only have one decision to make. I get this or I don't. But there's no other added hurdles. And for your sake, your own sake, you get it. And your next relationship, your current relationship, there's only three relationships. God, self, and others. And when my relationship with others is off, it's important for me to check on my relationship with myself. Am I setting healthy boundaries? Well, they won't let me. <laughs> Who's the they? Right? Do you, do you have a, a mouse in your pocket? Like, who, who's, who else are you talking about? There, there's only you. There's only one of us here. So you're talking about others. There's schizophrenia. It's okay. <laughs> but there are no others. They're, they're dreamed images. I get myself together. My value is right. Therefore, my boundaries are clear. This works for you or it doesn't is what you say to others. And we get to decide if that's okay. And if we don't, then that's our decision. That's us honoring our boundaries. Bye. But I don't want you to leave. Now you're torn, which means you don't know who you are, and we're back to that again. But anyway, I'm glad you shared that, and I'm glad you said it the way you did. There are only, not Michael said, that's absolutely perfect. All right. Yes, dear? Ooh, <laughs> your employees mirroring you, yeah. Oh, glad I could help. Yeah. Good job. Good job. You you got to become like the employee whisperer. 
I don't mean shock callers. I'm just saying um, one, one quick thing um, that I told a woman, you know, recent that owned a business, big business, big money business, but her employees run, you know, the, the, you know, the inmates are running the asylum. And she's like, well, I, you know, I try to have meetings and they take it over and they negative. And I say, you have to go to work on Monday, have your meeting. Great to see you all. <sighs> Starting today, you're all fired. <laughs> this is what I told her. You're all fired. Oh, that feels so good. You're all fired. And from now on, there's a new way we're going to do it. Here's a brochure for you all or a booklet, <laughs> a booklet or whatever. Here's, here's the new standards. Anybody that would like to be hired at this new business, you're welcome back starting tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I would do. You raise it to the ground. And it's not raise like lift something. You raise meaning razor. You raise it to the ground. The way, you know, uh, conquerors of old, they would take a city when it was just too far gone. Boom. You just raise it. to. Sometimes that's what you have to do and start over. I've done that several times and I've told big, big name churches that this is what they have. And they always, and I am swear to God, one of the biggest new age names in the world. And they were having problems and I told them, here's what you have to do. And they said, we could never do that. Why? Because of the people that give us the most money would, would not allow us to do that. And I'm like, then you're already dead. You're already, you know, you're, you're done. You're already sold out and you're not even what you say you are. See? So I'm glad you got that. All you have to do, honey, is a greater good. It's not even dictatorial. Like, you know, it's not like you're doing that. You're saying more love. That should be a good thing. But we won't be doing such and such any, at all here. We slip. We slip. I'm not, you know, you say, you know, we slip. But... The general the rule is positivity. And even your most loved friends will hate you, potentially hate you, be tempted when you try to set that kind of standard because people are used to thinking and living that way. Run for office and try to implement that in the world. Pff, you know? Yes? Nice. That's right. We forget who we are, and then we start looking for a path that has some kind of light because we suspect that the light is our goal. And we forget, eventually, enough searching, enough paths, eventually finding some light, eventually bigger and bigger, and then finally the great light, and you go, and I had it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's accompanied with great laughter. Oh my God, what was I doing? You know? Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Closing, thank you for being here. And um, I, I'm, I'm finished. I wrote a book uh, called The Daughters of Heaven. I wrote it in a week, edited it in a week, and now it's in the hands of other editors. They're checking it out. But I want to say one thing. In the back of the book, I included the first couple dozen testimonials that came in about the talk talks that I did here about this thing called The Daughters of Heaven. Those who feel connected to God and feel like they have a, a greater path than just being a, a wonderful light worker, but it's those who f have always felt such a connection to the Divine Mother or, and, and so on. We've talked about that. But I'm including the testimonials, and I put a paragraph before them and said, these are being included not as sales pitches for the book or for the lecture I did on the topic. I said, I want these in here because they're great teaching devices. The comments the people made are themselves talks. You follow? They're educational, and I mean that. And that's one reason why we do this at the end and why we did a little more today than usual. What you're saying, you think you're just sharing. So he says, you know, here's what I loved. There are only three relationships, God, self, other. And, and he might, or you might think, that he just shared that his thing. He also said it for you so that you'll remember it more likely when you're gone from here today. He, he taught something. You see, and she taught something and she, you know, see, this is adding to it. So the feedback, which is important, if the feedback is teaching, therefore you're now yourselves being a channel of the same thing. 
And I love that, that inclusiveness to where we're all rising to higher and higher levels. And when I get those testimonials, I always cut out, Michael, you're wonderful. And I, and I, I always cut out the Michael stuff and get to what you got and then you're teaching it. I'm a terrible, like, I think, agent, you know, um, for myself. Like, I, I, there's, I, sh I should be selling, I could be selling more books if I just did more of that standard stuff, but it's just not me, you know? I just feel like the greater good, the teaching, God. <laughs> give you an example? Oh, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I don't have any memorized. Um, they started with Michael, you're wonderful. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, with, when it comes to daughters of heaven, one of the most consistent things, um, just in a sentence or two, something happened. As soon as you said the words daughters of heaven, something happened. One's going, my ears were buzzing. Another, well, this fire was moving through my body. Another, I was shaking, crying. Crying joy, crying, I mean, all kinds of, uh, in a word, activation, when I mentioned that phrase. And because then I went on to say, and that was, they got that as soon as I said it. But I elaborated and explained, these beings, it's like saying, guess what, um, angels have come to earth, or light workers. You know, it's a term that represents a wave of goodness. And God has activated these beings called the daughters of heaven. Um, and, um, and one person already has said, and you might be watching, Michael, can you change it to the sons and daughters so that it's equal? No. <laughs> no. For a reason. First of all, if you're in touch with your feminine self, then you are a daughter of heaven. So shut up. Just, you know. <laughs> you know but I'm not going to call it the sons and daughters of heaven. They're the daughters of heaven. There's a reason why it's called that. Feel it. Don't look for the equality of... Feel it. The daughters of heaven, there's a reason. Because our soul is known as feminine. Our bodies are more dense, they're more masculine by nature in terms of frequency. Our souls are considered, we're the daughters of God. We're, our souls are. So in a way, the daughters of heaven means we're getting back to who we, who we really are. But there's a lot more to it. But the testimonials, have, were fan, hundreds of them I've received from that one talk. But, um, it, and it's become a book and all that already. So that'll be out. It takes about six, eight weeks to print. So it'll be out within eight weeks. Um, and, that's the, and that is a manifestation of this thing, becoming. You stick to your guns. You live the life. You keep in touch with this, and you will become better at everything you do. You'll receive insights and inspirations to write a book or to paint a painting, even if you're not a painter. A whole greater us comes through when we live in accordance. We don't str get strict and become like fundamentalists. That's not what we're supposed to be. That's not what it means to get in touch with God. It's more like this than it is like this, just rigid. I got to be real, and I got to make sure my language is really, you know. No, you, you might be the light worker that needs to blurt out a few four-letter words. You might need to be the light worker that is taller than everybody on the planet. Your uniqueness God will use if you surrender yourself. Please stand for our closing prayer. And thank you so much for all the extra patience of time. I know you have to get to the cereal aisle. <laughs> Just a breath or two of deep gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you for everybody that shared their feedback. Even if I don't remember each word of the talk or feedback or meditation, I know it. I know it. Something wonderful is happening in and through me slash us. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We, we are, are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God is, I am, we are, and so it is. Thank you, guys. Peace be with you.